Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! We're going to return to one of our uh, two top stories. Uh, we've been talking about the NHS. We've also been talking about the EU uh, withdrawal bill, uh, which is back in the Lords later today. We can go over to Central Lobby in the Houses of Parliament and talk to the Conservative peer, Patience Wheatcroft. Thank you uh, for joining us, um, Patience. Um, will you abide by the Commons decision to back the government's plan for giving Parliament a vote on the deal negotiated with the EU this year? This would mean accept the deal or we leave without a deal? We'll listen to the arguments and we'll look at new amendments that are going to be tabled this afternoon. And if I think they do the job better, then I shall certainly be voting with the Dominic Grieve amendment. Right. And so you would like to see Parliament direct the government in terms of the EU negotiations in the event of no deal? I certainly don't want us to have a no deal or that's it, we leave without a deal scenario. I think that Parliament should be given a greater role in the process. I think that the people who voted for Brexit didn't know on what terms they voted and therefore democratically it would be sensible when we know what the deal is to put that to the people. But if we don't get a people's vote then it's imperative that Parliament as a proxy for the people should have a say. Anne-Marie Trevelyan, what do you say to Patience Wheatcroft? Um, well, I think we fundamentally disagree on the idea of a second referendum uh, and indeed that the Lords uh, is there to frustrate Brexit. And I hope very much that the Lords uh, will look at the government amendment which was placed last week and support that one. Are you there to frustrate Brexit, Patience? Not to frustrate it. I'm there to ensure that the people get the, be the best possible outcome. And I'm not convinced that when they voted for Brexit, they voted to leave the EU no matter how deleterious the terms of that might be. Are you willing to raise the stakes so high that the government itself is threatened? There's absolutely no reason why it should threaten the government at all. There's no reason why Mrs May's premiership should be threatened by us supporting the Grieve Amendment. I think when she promises a Brexit dividend, she is threatening the premiership because I think it's very, very hard to see where that dividend comes from. Right. I mean, Anne-Marie, just taking this idea that there is no threat to Theresa May's premiership, what are you worrying about then? Let Parliament have its say. Well, the Lords will uh, vote through whichever amendment uh, uh, takes their fancy today and it will be back in the Commons. And then uh, those of us who are elected by our constituents, who gave us that clear direction uh, that uh, Brexit was the choice they wanted after the referendum, uh, will direct our decision later in the week. Uh, I mean, Patience, we can't you just trying to tie the government's hand. Surely it has to be the government that makes these negotiations either successful or not. It's not up to Parliament to direct it because otherwise there will be people perhaps like you, uh, who hold uh, views about the EU, um, who will try and stop Brexit happening or at least go for a different vision of Brexit to the way the government sees it. The only thing that we're doing is saying that if the government absolutely fails in those negotiations and comes back and says, we have not managed to secure a good deal, we're therefore leaving without a deal, Parliament, on behalf of the people, should at least have a say an ability to say, we just don't think that's the right thing to do. Right. That you're, isn't what the people You're nodding your for. head. Well, you've got Stephen Kinnock's support from uh, the Labour Party. Yeah, no, I, I agree absolutely. I think the critical element that we have to factor in here as well is the utter incompetence of this government, the totally shambolic way in which they've managed the negotiations so far. They're still the Cabinet's still negotiating with itself, really, and not really with Michel Barnier. So the chances of us crashing out simply because of total government shambles is quite high. And in that case, Case. Parliament is the other key institution that runs the democracy, our democracy. It has to act in the national interest and be ready to step in. But it's only in the case where there is no deal. And that's absolutely clear and simple in my view. And it's not about frustrating Brexit. It's about what do we do if this shambles really does hit a dead end and we're left with no choice but to instruct the government to do something different. Patience, do you think there's still trust among colleagues in the Conservative Party? I think trust is, is not as prevalent as one might hope, but I do think that this is an issue that's bigger than party. Stephen's absolutely right, this is about the country, and I think I trust my colleagues to put country before party. Which colleagues do you trust to put country before party? 
some of my Conservative colleagues. Right. Do you trust the government? I think the government's in a very difficult position at the moment. and Mrs May is trying to keep her party together. Uh, it may be, as it has been for the last 40 years, that there are some people on the far right of the party who she just has to say goodbye to. Anyone in mind? Oh, I think you know the, the main culprits. Um, I think that the European reform, reform Group has a very clear agenda, which is to take Britain out of the EU, come what may. And I don't believe that that's the putting... Right. I mean, I mean the, the re referendum result is to take the UK, obviously, out of the EU. Um, but not at any cost. Right. The Lords has inflicted another heavy defeat on the government's Brexit bill. Peers voted 354 to 235 for an amendment to the bill, giving MPs a, quote, meaningful vote on the final Brexit deal. This issue will now be debated back in the Commons on Wednesday and the outgoing president of the business lobby group, the CBI, has given a gloomy assessment of the UK's future, saying he's certain the country will be worse off after Brexit. The only question is by how much. Our business editor, Siobhan Kennedy, joins me now. Siobhan. Well, the CBI, John, as you know, represents the majority of Britain's businesses. Their president, Paul Drexler, steps down tomorrow. Now, he's an upbeat Irishman, but uh, today there was very little to take that was positive from his message. Um, on every measure today, he was very negative about what's going to happen to the economy. Politicians, he said, were in turmoil. He said that the ports potentially would see food shortages and the economy, he said, whatever the outcome, would be worse off. Now, he said businesses, in fact, knew no more about Brexit today than they did three years ago. So I sat down with him today and I started by asking him whether he believed this Brexit dividend that Theresa May spoke about for the NHS was real. Here's what he had to say. I think there's clearly a big question about how it's going to be funded. Uh, all the analysis that I've seen would suggest there's not a dividend to come from Brexit, but since we still haven't got an agreed trade deal and we still haven't got an impact assessment, nobody could know whether there's a dividend or not. So you're saying that's fake news? I think it's a modern way of communicating that perhaps doesn't put all of the facts on the table in a way that reflects reality. So do you feel personally let down? You must be. You've been trying to persuade them to focus on the economy for three years and they've not listened to you. The degree of fracture and fragmentation in both the Conservative Party and the Labour Party is more extreme than we have ever seen in this country. Detail matters. And frankly, we have arguably less detail now than we did three years ago. Aren't you just being polite here? I mean... Well, of course, of course I'd be polite, but the bottom line is we need to move on. How confident are you that you're going to get what you're asking for? I think there is still a very high level of risk, a very high level of uncertainty, and there is still the concern that we won't be able to find a way forward between the UK and Europe. We depend on just-in-time manufacturing. And just-in-time in this country, in automotive and in food, means 15 minutes, not 15 hours. So there are quite profound risks in reality if we don't manage this transition successfully. And inevitably, any compromise is going to be less good than what we have today. The only question is how much less good it will be. A lot of people would hear you and others and they would think, well, actually, you all predicted that the economy would go to hell in a handbasket and that didn't happen. What are you moaning about? So, three, number one, we have not left yet. We haven't even defined what life post-Brexit is going to be, so we shouldn't expect extreme reaction, number one. Number two, we're already growing at less than half the rate of all the other countries in the world. One and a half or two percent slower GDP is very significant. So the serious stuff is already happening. The consequences will take longer to be felt. At the end of your term, are you more or less optimistic than you were when you started? I'm much more optimistic about what individual businesses in this country can and will achieve. They will be hugely successful. They just might make more opportunity outside of the UK than they would otherwise. What you seem to be saying is, whatever the outcome, Siobhan, we are going to be worse off. I think is that your final the, message as you leave the well, CBI? I don't think that for all that I've seen so far, I cannot see an outcome that is going to make this country richer.
But that's a terrible admission for you standing the, down. Does that mean that you so failed? That's the choice pe but that's the choice people have made. People have made a choice about what they want in political terms. That's got a consequence. Paul Drexler speaking to Siobhan earlier. Now, we should have got used to it by now. The House of Lords handing another Brexit defeat to the government. But tonight, over giving MPs a meaningful vote at the business end of the Brexit talks could be, well, more meaningful than most. Our political editor, Faisal Islam, is at Westminster for us. So, Faisal, this goes back to MPs now, doesn't it? So, how likely is a defeat, then, for Theresa May? Well, Anna, they call this whole process ping-pong as the ball bounces from the Lords to the Commons to the Lords... This one has been returned with quite some topspin, perhaps a smash from the peers back to the MPs uh, because they've increased the majority that we last saw on this issue from 91 uh, up to 119. That wasn't expected. Normally the majority kind of diminishes as the peers worry a little bit about going too far. But no, up went the majority, up went the number of Tory rebels, including respected former trade ministers, the ex-co-chairman. Uh, and, and so this matters. Why? Because it shows that perhaps some of the shenanigans at the end of last week when promises were given, some of them personal from the Prime Minister to MP rebels on her own side, weren't actually delivered on. And so what you had today, reflecting that lack of trust, was Lord H Viscount Helsham, the Douglas Hogg, the former Tory cabinet minister, you had he putting down a motion which essentially, an amendment which essentially uh, encapsulated that deal uh, that Douglas, uh, that uh, Dominic Greaves says was reneged on. So that is now down on the bill and will be voted on on Wednesday in the Commons. Are there enough rebels? You'd think at this stage there aren't, in particular because there are five Labour MPs uh, rebelling against their side too. But right now, lack of trust in, the, in Parliament uh, and concern about whether or not the government can get it through. They should be able to, but are they willing to risk those numbers? Could we have another compromise in negotiations expected tomorrow? Faisal, thank you.